So in continuation of the previous video, uh, this is the figure which shows the dihedral, the location of the uh, three dihedral planes present in the thin molecule. You can see this is the upper triangle, this is the lower triangle, and one plane can exist for uh, this triangle that will also divide the lower triangle. So that is the location of uh, the hydrogen base. And in the same way, if you work out the problem of eclipsed ferrocene and staggered ferrocene, you can work out in the same way. The thing is that the axis will change. In our eclipsed ferrocene, you have C5 axis, you have S5 axis, uh, you have 5 uh, C2 axis, the way you have here 3 C2 axis and then you have five sigma vertical planes. But if you go to the staggered ferrocene, then you have a C5 axis, which is not S5, that will act as S10 axis. In the middle, you will also have here five C2 axis present, the way you have in the staggered EPM. And of course, five sigma dihedrons will also be present. One thing is also remarkable that in staggered ethane, in staggered ethane as well as in the staggered ferrocene, this symmetry element, center of symmetry is also prevalent. In staggered ethane, I is present. but not in the eclipsed ethane. Because since it is staggered conformation, so hope you can see ki if one CH bond is like this on the first carbon, then the second CH bond on the second carbon will be in this position. So this is a kind of inversion. I mean, if you rotate only upper part by 180 degree it will come over here and obviously it will get the image at the lower temperature. So the three, uh, the three hydrogens on one carbon are in inverted position to the other one in the staggered conformation which in some cases also called anti conformation. So I is present, I is not, you know it is S2 axis. So these are the total <coughs> symmetry elements of the systems. There are many, many molecules as examples. So I will discuss them during the discussion forum. Now let us proceed further in our course. And the next uh, is uh, covalent bonding. I, I mean, covalent bonding, we have already considered all these molecules are covalently bonded. But as a theory, as you know that uh, <coughs> covalent bonded substances can exist as molecules, they can also exist as lattices. Examples are present for both. But the idea of covalent bonding was uh, as given by the world theory that is called electronic theory of valency by G and Lewis. Consider that atoms make bonds to complete their octet and Lewis dot structures were written, as you know. Uh, formal charges were also calculated for various structures. But as you very well know that the uh, octet rule is not valid everywhere. There are so many exceptions. But carbon follows it religiously. That is why this theory is still taught because organic chemistry is filled with carbon compounds, which are in very large number. However, the drawback of the Lewis theory was that it could not explain the experimentally observed shapes and geometries of the various molecules. For example, we know that methane is tetrahedral, but this theory has no explanation why the four bonds are aligned tetrahedral. 
So the next theory came, which is called uh, violence bond theory, given by Hitler and Hendel, which considered electrons as waves and the idea of atomic orbitals was uh, introduced and the bond between two atoms was considered as overlap of the atomic orbitals of the two atoms and that overlap can take place in two ways along the if the atom overlap is taking place along the internuclear axis this is the nucleus 1, this is the nucleus 2 and our line is like this this was called sigma 1 and if the overlap is taking place like this here and here then it was called pi 1 so the idea of a covalent bond changed from sharing of electrons to overlapping of orbitals. Now what is an orbital? The orbital, an orbital is a wave function. The equations can be written and their linear combinations, linear combination equations can also be written. And uh, this led, this was uh, the idea of this theory which was modified by Linus Pauling who introduced the concept of hybridization into it and hybridization helped in providing a theoretical explanation to most of the simple molecules, common molecules which contain covalent bonds. So you write a question here the way you have to write in the exam on the basis of valence bond theory, discuss the shapes and geometries of the following molecules like SO2, SO3, sulfate anion, H2SO4, NH4 plus. HClO, HClO2, HClO3, HClO4, uh, ClF3, HClF2, HClF4, HClF6, SF4, SF6, something like this. Then, how much you have to write in the exam? So, any one example I will explain here. Since you are not before me here, Otherwise, in class, I ask which one I should solve. Students so tell. But in this case, uh, I will solve the one which often in the past students have asked me to do so. And often they ask me for this HClO4 or HClO3. So today I will choose this HClO3 to solve this problem. How much and how to write in the exam? You see, this entire theory is made to explain the experimentally observed geometry. Because first is the experiment that tells that that CO4 is tetrahedral molecule, and then theory is given. For your level, we don't tell you the quantum mechanical treatment. I mean the combination of wave functions 
the new wave functions which is generated in the Spiti hybridization. So we have a trick to explain to you and then we use a mathematical trick so that you can have an idea what is the experimental geometry of this particular molecule. Mind you, it is not any chemistry, it is just a manipulation that helps you to solve this kind of problems. So what you do, you use a formula and you calculate number of hybrid orbitals of central atom that is equal to 1 by 2 B plus M minus C plus A and we are solving the problem of HClO4 right now. So we will use this formula V is the number of valency electron, valence electrons of the central atom. M is the number of univalent or monovalent atoms around the central atom as indicated in the formula. C is cationic charge if present. A is anionic charge if present. In this case, if we apply this formula, we get 1 by 2, 7 plus 1 minus 0 plus 0. And this comes out to be. Now, there is a list from which you can have an idea what may be the hybridization of the central atom when you have point found out this number and that list is if this number is 2 then hybridization is sp 3 sp2 4 sp3 5 bsp2 6 sp3 g2 and 7 sp3 d3 so in our case we are getting hello ha sir namaste majid bol raha hai abhi so this is uh, In this case, we are getting 4. Ah, well, one more thing I must say. When hybridization is sp, the geometry is linear, or angle is 180. This, you know, triangle planar, this is tetrahedral, this is a square planar, this is octahedral, and this is pentagonal by pyramid of this case. You get pentagonal by pyramid. So, Uh, we found the number 4, so the hybridization of Cl is sp3. So in all other examples also you will do the same exercise and find the hybridization of the central line. After that, you will write the ground state configuration of the central atom. Here in this case it is chlorine in uh, ground state that is 3s2 3p5 and 3d0 you make in block diagrams like this Then, since hydration is P3 and the formula is the HClO3 and you know that HClO3 is an acid, protic acid, 
therefore how many atoms are bonded with cl because hydrogen is not attached with the cl it is attached with the oxygen so in this molecule there are only three sigma bonds or three atoms are attached with the central atom therefore within the range of sp3 hybridization within the range of sp3 hybridization which is obtained from the formula we have to create three unpaired electrons in the excited state this much we can guess so here cl excited will be like this in this range of sp3 we have to create three unpaired electrons one is already there these two we will jump into the d and hence we will create three unpaired electrons now this will hybridize to give four hybrid orbitals hybrid orbitals have two properties number 1 they always make sigma bonds and number 2 they try to remain as far as possible in space from each other so you have four hybrid bonds hybrid orbitals and uh, from any central atom four lines can be drawn at a maximum separation of 109 degree 28 minute that is a tetrahedral angle so you will take the central atom and you will draw four hybrid orbitals protruding from it at an angle of 109 degree 28 minutes in one of the hybrid orbitals we will get lone pair because in the previous diagram we have seen s was having a pair of protons and this we will contain single electrons now oxygen will come now what is oxygen oxygen is a uh, 2s2 2p4 means uh, in the